Welcome back inside my wardrobe for another chat with an author of an audiobook that I was chosen to produce and narrate. And the timing of this book, wow, couldn't be more perfect. As the British government are advising us that we should be working from home wherever possible, his book is all about that and how it's done because there's a lot more to it than you think. Trust me, I've been through this journey. You know, I used to work in, in a radio station in London and now I don't com commute. I now do my podcast radio show from this wardrobe and I do all my uh, audio book narration from inside this wardrobe. I work from home. The book is called Effective Remote Working Techniques for Coders by Harry Singh. And although it says for coders, it, it says that because that's the business he's in. But the information in this book is so relevant to whatever work it is that you're going to be doing or you're currently doing remotely. It's a very big change of lifestyle if you've always worked in a, an office or a workplace and now you're doing it from home. And he's a terrific guy, you know, for years he's been a worker and a manager and I wish that he'd been the manager at some of the radio stations I've worked at because you get the feeling that he really cares about the team that work for him. He gives an example in this chat of seeing some communication online between a few workers and he jumped in and he helped them straighten them out and everybody wins, you know. The team are happier and more focused. He, as a manager, gets more from them and the clients, you know, get better work and deadlines are met without there being too many problems. He knows this stuff really well and you can tell that his motivation for sharing it is to just help other people learn. And I enjoyed my chat with him. I'm sure you'll enjoy his book. This is Harry Singh and his book is called Effective Remote Working Techniques for Coders. Now I know you as Prem. Is Harry Singh your highfalutin author name? That is my author name. It's also my grandfather's name. Nice one. I I'd put his name in print. Yeah. So tell me about the inspiration for the for the book. Then I was going to say audio book because it's already an actual uh, print and ebook. So tell me about the, uh, yeah. the inspiration. Uh, well, I've the uh, everything in the introduction of the the two books are, are true. Um, the, the only thing that's not true is the the name that's written there. But I have been a contractor for sixteen years, and I've. Uh, worked a lot in London, I've worked uh, in Manchester at the BBC, I've uh, worked uh, in Reading and up in Leeds, so I've, I've travelled around a lot, but also for large parts of uh, these contract, various contracts that I've worked on in that time, uh, there's been the requirement to work from home and the, the allowance to work from home. Obviously different clients have different outlooks on what uh, remote working should be and working from home should be. Uh, and different preferences, uh, some people, um, and it is people, it's not, it's very rarely that a company culture thing, it's individual managers who decide, no, if I go and see you in the work, you know, sat on that desk, you can't possibly be working, I, you have to be there. And then there's others who say, mate, as long as I, as long as the work gets done by the end of the sprint, um, and the deadlines are being met and my client's happy, I couldn't care less where you work, when you work, it's fine, you do what you want just to deliver, deliver what you're getting paid for. Um, so, and there's obviously various levels in between. Yeah. Um, so I, I do genuinely have all the experience and I am writing from experience. Um, and to say with this, with the, the lockdown that's just happened uh, six months ago now, uh, the people in my team, a couple of them were struggling um, to, to make that adjustment. Uh, it's their first time actually working remote properly. You know, the occasional day here and there, you, you, you manage and you get back in the office and Okay, I'm back in the office. Great, <laughs> I can see everyone again. Um, but yeah, they were generally, genuinely um, struggling to make that switch uh, to full-time remote work, and the isolation was starting to get to them, and lots of things like that. And uh, you know, when they saw that uh, it was just another another working day to me, that uh, they started asking questions, and you know, my my openness to help them um, really got them. Get, got their confidence up working from home, and um, and the, one of them suggested, "Why don't you, why don't you just 
you know, document all this. And uh, okay, that's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> not a bad idea. Why not? Um, so yeah, and uh, so yeah, I started just making a load of notes uh, about you know all well basically the questions they were asking me, um, and long forming the answers that I was giving them back and trying to trying to put some structures to it and. Voila! Pop, out pop these two books. These uh, two books and the coders, one for managers. And, and the first one is uh, is out, is for sale. The the second one we've yeah. done, which will be out soon. Yeah. It's so a review still, I checked this morning. Yeah. So that is your business. You're a coder, so that's computers. That's right. Yes, I'm a software developer. Yeah. But the information in the book I found was definitely not specific for coders. This is good for anybody that works remotely. Yeah. And I can say from personal experience, because I went on that journey before COVID, I was running a radio station in London. I was the program director of Fix Radio in London. And just before COVID, actually the 19th of February, I was let go. And so my but wife it, and I went to New Zealand for a trip that we've been planning for, for a long time to visit her parents. And we came back and it's now March. And then along comes lockdown and all of the interviews I had with the radio stations and all the radio people I'd you know, organized to meet up with to talk about where my career goes next, everything disappeared. And I suddenly decided, had to work out how I was going to earn a living and I came to the conclusion pretty quickly, I've got to find a way of yeah. earning a living while I'm at home and it turned out to be producing and narrating audiobooks. So I was going through this adjustment because I'd never been a remote worker before. I was going through this adjustment as I was reading and producing <laughs> your book. So for me, the the Hopefully timing was, actually, uh, Oh, was oh, beautiful. so much of it. And and so much of it I'm still working on because so um, particularly you, you mentioned how you have to stay healthy through it, yeah. through staying fit and oh, and having, you know, I'm not quite there yet. And I know it's in the book. I'm not quite there yet. That's one of the things that you don't think about because the first thing you think about is doing the work and getting getting paid and making sure everything's right with yeah. the work. But the other side of your life, y your health, because I'm not, you know, we live about 10 minutes away from the railway station because we live north of London in Hitchin. And I used to walk to the railway station and back every day. I used to, you know, walk up and down stairs in the building we were in uh, on South Bank there. And, you know, that all goes when you're working from yeah. home. And so the book was um, ve very helpful um, to do with discipline and being organized and that. Because when you organize your day, it's very different from your day being organized for you. Oh, and so yeah, the, book, the, yeah. the book has been just terrific for that, to, to give little tips yeah. from that. The timing yeah, of this... a couple of different hats on, don't you? Yeah. But the timing yeah. of this, because of lockdown... Just was, did you start this before lockdown or did did lockdown happen first? It was it was the trigger, um, right? So like I say, I, I, it, for me it's a normal part of work. Um, generally, it's about fifty fifty. Um, I've had one particular contract where I was uh, remote for nine days out of ten, and only had to go down to London for one day every other week. Yeah, um, and again various day splits in between um, but bouncing between remote work and office based work wherever that office may be um, was just normal for me you know it's, it's all, the, all the things that I've mentioned in the book I've genuinely worked through and conquered and fallen foul of initially and then conquered um, and yeah so the, the, for me now 10, 10 or so years it's a 10-ish ten, year development over yeah. my 16 year working as a contractor. Um, they are genuine lessons that I've learned and put into place. So again, having had that time frame to develop those habits and bed them in, for me it's now just normal and they're not issues for me. But I, at the same time, as soon as I hear someone using particular language or see someone taking particular actions, they're, they're just obvious to me that this is the problem that you're having can i suggest this to you uh, can you, know, you can you give, you give me an amp can you give me an example of one of those um i could i could uh, so multitasking so um there's uh, a tester on one of uh, on on the team on the projects i'm working on at the moment um and he was 
it's always the way we have a two week window where we do work at the beginning the developers are always busy and developers always uh, have very little to do at the end because we've all finished our work and it's the opposite for testers they have very little to do at the beginning of that two week window and they're all completely stacked up at the end uh, as, as the mad panic towards the end of that two week deadline where we've got a number of what we call tickets or pieces of work that we need to deliver uh, to the client um, and they, they were trying to multitask these four or five tickets that they had lined up um, and I could see the conversations in, in the work chat going about this and I could see who's getting uh, conversations mixed up and information that for one particular story mixed up with another story and things like that. Um, so that sort of gave me the sort of the, 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 the trigger to say, uh, just hang on a minute, take a deep breath. Let's just work through this one first and then, um, the, the person who was in charge of another story, then I handed the baton over to him saying, look, just focus on the, the information you need from this guy. Um, and this lady need is next in the queue, but once you, you know, just deal with them in sequence. And that enabled him to get all his work done by the end of the day. And obviously, you know, we're, as developers at that point in the two week window, we're not particularly busy. So we're more than happy to support and give whatever information and whatever assistance it's, the testers need to, because it's a team effort. You know, we're all working together, and if those tickets don't get over because of testing, then we've all failed. Yeah. So it's, it's in everyone's best interest to make sure that we get all that work done and help each other out. Um, but having that bouncing around on the conversations, trying to hold six different strands in your head, it, it just wouldn't, it, wasn't, it doesn't work. It really doesn't work. No matter how good you think you are at multitasking, you just can't do it. And a lot of people just have to face that reality is just tackle one thing at a time. And even if you have to time box it to an hour or two hours for a particular task, and then you move on, whether you finished it or not. But again, having that artificial pressure of only allowing yourself an hour or two hours for a particular task gives you the impetus to actually just focus, get your head down and just nail it and get it done. Because you know, at that, as soon as one o'clock hits, you're going to move on to something else or you've got a meeting to walk into or somebody's going to call you and ask you for another piece of information because you've asked them to hold off until one o'clock and then you're going to have to change context so you get that thing done so you were yeah, seeing you were seeing your team making exactly the same mistakes you'd made when you became a remote yeah, worker yeah. you could you could see it yeah. and go over the years yeah, yeah. so they're going to think yeah. you're a genius <laughs> you know, but, but you know <laughs> yeah and you mentioned how you were seeing chats on there and what I like about this audio book the effective uh, remote working techniques for coders by Harry Singh what I like about it is that it is so up to date you mentioned in it you mentioned well like you said you saw the conversation going on you mentioned the latest software the use of the likes of slack and and things like that for communicating yeah in the workplace so have you seen that evolve over time and you have to keep you have to keep on top of this because this is the kind of thing that you don't you don't go right i've got this now you've got to go no what's the latest thing that must be pretty hard to keep yeah. up with because you've got to have everybody on the same system you can't have everybody somebody liking this and somebody else liking that but you actually you actually spelled it out in the audio book you spelled out that slack is good for this email is good for this uh, and all yeah. yeah so that yeah there's different contexts and every piece of software has its own use case and uh, most appropriate time to use that particular form of communication. It's all very nuanced and subtle. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah, so, so to take that example a little bit further, so text-based chat such as Slack, which is more instant messaging is, uh, I've got a very simple question. Uh, I need to, uh, I'm blocked on a particular task. If somebody can give me that very specific piece of information of if I need to go to this piece of code to, to take a particular design pattern or just even take a snippet of code and copy it into where I need it. If I can't find it, I'll ask someone and if they can instantly give me that, they'll unblock me, save me being blocked for half an hour. Um, it just saves everyone a lot of time, but that's almost throwaway information as well. Once I've taken that piece of code and used it and got my piece of code working, then I'm happy I can carry on. Uh, I don't need that piece of information anymore. But if there's um, the output of a meeting, you've, you've had a long meeting, you've got 10 agenda items that have been covered, you need to cover the minutes of that meeting. Having that throwaway nature of instant messaging is probably not the most appropriate way to 
communicate that to a group of people. You want to have that uh, cemented in time a, a little bit harder. So you use email as yeah. a more appropriate archivable uh, form of communication. Yeah, yeah, and searchable. Yeah. Yeah, 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 searchable. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, both of them are searchable, but um, just having that the the archival aspect of it, um, especially with a lot of logical government departments and corporations that I personally uh, seem to uh, be work for, uh, they'll have their own archiving policies and stuff like that. So in place uh, uh, for uh, compliance reasons, for example. Um, so generally, once something's in email, you never, ever lose it, even if you wanted to be able to lose it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and it, it's interesting talking to you now. Like this is we literally were remote working when we did the audio book. Yeah. Because I would send yeah. you the and files and I go check these files, tell me, and you would you would come back with some feedback. And we had some um, some of the feedback in the very beginning was about the quality of the audio, and you went you went through that and try this, and we we worked on it because you needed to get it right, and it it all came together. It was a very easy project. To work on so thanks very much for that prim it was uh, no it, it, it was a good thing and along the way i was learning about how to be a remote worker and yeah. uh, and we were putting this audio book together now the books yeah. the oh, books we were, probably using, sorry, we were probably using the worst possible messaging system to do all that oh it's terrible isn't it it's um because <laughs> you have to do it through acx and uh yeah, it's, it, it's it is a horrible thing and uh but so maybe the next one we work on, we'll use Slack or whatever it turns out to be the, the better yeah. way of doing it or, or email for more archivable stuff. Now, the title of the book, Effective Remote Working Techniques for Coders by Harry Singh. The subtitle of the book is Nine Practical Steps to Boost Your Productivity When Working Wherever You Like. Because the thing with remote yeah. working, as you point out very early on in the book, is people think it's working from home. It is working from anywhere. Yeah, it's a natural assumption. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, of the nine practical steps, which one for you is the most important? Without a doubt, it's diet. Right. Okay. Diet. This this is also one I need to work on. Wow. And you can't concentrate. If you can't concentrate, then you're going to struggle to stay focused on what you need, to get done, um, and you're going to end up with uh, health issues, whether that be skin or blood sugar or cholesterol or any number of things if you're not eating healthy if you're not eating on time and regularly your body's going to go out of whack um as i said your concentration level is going to go out the window um and it's going to become pretty apparent to your remote colleagues pretty soon pretty quickly so if you don't yeah you start with yourself and then the work comes naturally uh, off the back of that, um, you, if you have a good diet and a regular diet, then that's that's a really really solid foundation for you to to build on. And um, one of one of the big tips I give is don't try and rush your lunch. Give yourself an hour and a half for lunch. You've got that time when you're at home. You're not commuting, so you saved however long your commute is on the way there and on the way back. So um, I recommend you wake up at the same time as you would if you were commuting. Start work early. So you're not, you're not, you know, your alarm doesn't go off at a different point in time. I'm not saying wake up an hour earlier. So, you know, if you if you used to get up at seven and leave the door, house at eight and get to the office at nine, keep your alarm at seven o'clock. Start working at eight. Yeah. Uh, that that buys you an hour. Let's say for you, it was an hour's commute. Roughly, yeah. Right. Let's say. Yeah. Uh, you got an hour extra, so just use half an hour of that extra hour you just gained for lunch. So, get yourself some decent food over the weekend. Uh, if you're into meal prepping, do that. Um, prepare your, you know, your, your healthy um, parts of uh, your your meals that you want to do for times five for for the five lunches, um, and then prepare a different protein, let's say, um, every day, um, and take that time just to prepare something that you're going to enjoy, and give yourself that time to actually enjoy the food as well. Don't just shovel your face. Don't eat at your desk. That's, that's got to be rule number four or something. It's really high <laughs> up there. Do not eat at your desk and switch off from actual work for uh, you know at least an hour. You have to switch. You have to have that mental break um, for for a good period of time before you get back into it. After you've taken your time to 
actually enjoy your lunch. Now, you mentioned there five meals. The book makes it very clear that you should work the five-day week because it is tempting when your office commute is the next room or whatever. Yeah. On the weekend to to go in and do a little bit and keep my yeah, head and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, very yeah. strict on it. You're very strict <laughs> on it. Yeah, um, yeah. and I know exactly. even even dealing with you, I did some work on the book on the weekend, and I messaged you about something I can't remember what. I didn't hear back till Monday. No. <laughs> so you were practicing. I got the email. I got the email, but yeah, <laughs> I, I marked it as unread, and I'll deal with that on Monday. Right. Yeah, it's still going to be there. You're still going to be fine. Exactly. We still got the book anything. out. The book still went out. It didn't didn't slow it down. Everything happened. Yeah, nothing blew up. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all about planning and prep, really. Then. Um. Yes. Yes. Um, setting up uh, a schedule is another big tip. Um, at least having a broad strokes view of what your day is going to look like, just so you're not meandering through the day aimlessly um, and generally as a coder you, you you'll have a stack of tickets to work through and you'll know how long these things are going to take um, so you know that kind of gives you a bit of structure but it's the it's the things around the work so uh, the occasional call that you have to have with your managers um, and meetings with teams uh, various you know, teams whether it's your direct team or um, for me, there's a user experience team which will get involved with um, who guide the, how the interface of the product that we're working on looks and feels. Um, in terms of scheduling, the, the big thing to start with is when you want to finish working. Right, and stick to it. Yeah, and make that an absolute non-negotiable point in time in your day. And make it a regular point in time in your day so it becomes a part of your body clock almost. Yeah. So before that, you can be 100% work, work, work if it's 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock or whatever time you set, you know, you, this is a personal choice. That I'm not going to dictate what time it is, but let's say 5 o'clock as a your standard example. So you can be working 100% to 5 o'clock. There's no ramping down and trying to get into that ready to be in home life mode yeah. or ready, get ready for the commute. Let's just have a half hour chat with your mates. This is 100%. You are get you are fully productive until five o'clock, and you see that five o'clock, and then you go right. That's it. Stop. Down tools. I'm yeah. out. Yeah. And then that's when you start your 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 winding down yeah. process. Is another thing that we are going to in the book as well. Yeah. To actually, a a physical and mental process that you go through, almost like a ritual, which is your I'm now stopping work, yeah. and I'm spending time with my family, with my housemates who people hobbies or whatever it might be that you want to do that's get that's the hard line i'm stopping work i'm starting my life now yeah yeah uh, and, and so it that back, that has been really for the evening yeah and you back to work as uh, into your work life as well and you plan your work life based around that hard line in the sand yeah that has been really good for me actually and i've actually scheduled my, I'm quite strict with my day now. I because um, one of the things you have to do as an audiobook narrator and producer is audition for books, and yeah. it's one of the things. If I've got books to work on, and there's money to be made from doing them, I was like, "No, nah, I've got to do this one. I've got to do this one. I've still got that one I'm working on." Because I break them up and I do a little bit at a time. Um, the auditioning was falling by the wayside. But there's, right. there's, but while I worked out a way, what it, when you, what your voice first thing in the morning sounds different to in the afternoon, and so if you go back to work on a book you were working on at say four o'clock the day before, and you go to carry on doing it at seven o'clock in the morning when I tend to start doing stuff, is your voice sounds different and the the it, it doesn't connect. So I thought, well, I need, I need to find something to do at the first early part of the day where it doesn't matter that my voice sounds different. So that's when I do my auditions now. <laughs> so I get up first thing every day. I spend an hour, maybe two hours, and I just do auditions. It warms my voice up so that when I carry on with clients' work, my voice is already up and running, but I've got those auditions done. And that was, that was a direct result of your book was like, 
you know, know. okay, I've got this issue. I need to fix it. But it was to do with the scheduling and and finding the best time in the because that's the other thing is finding the best time in the day for certain things. And for me, yeah. that's that's been invaluable. And I I know now that by doing that, I'm making more money because I'm getting more. I'm doing more auditions and it's a numbers game and therefore I'm getting more audio books to produce. So thank you very much for that. I owe you a couple of quid there. <laughs> I'll accept their payment. That's okay. The other thing I liked about the book and you went into this um, quite, I, mean, I saw it as a chapter and you went into this a lot further and a lot deeper than I was expecting. I thought because it's a business book this, this is for people it's about working. It's a workbook. It's it's not designed as a as a fun book, although there's a lot of interesting stuff in it. It's not dull by any means, because it's got effective re effective remote working techniques for coders by Harry Singh. I was expecting it to be all business, but you spend a lot of time talking about meditation and the importance of that. Could you just talk us through a bit of that? Yeah, um, it's the meditation is kind of. Uh, a way of, for me personally, of um, managing the mental health side of it. Now, mental health generally in Western culture is almost a taboo subject. We don't like talking about it. Um, and it's it's a very overlooked downside of uh, the isolation that's caused by remote working. Um, and that remote workers can very, very easily and um, it, it, it's a slight that you don't feel yourself sliding down when you're in it um, and meditation can help you take that sort of step back um, from from your, your isolated focus I need to get this job done um, minute to minute minute by minute uh, of the day to actually just take some time and take a step back almost get the thousand foot or the ten thousand foot helicopter view of your life uh, and just give yourself that minute or half an hour or however long you, you might use yourself to reassess regularly um, and get a feel for who you are and what you want to achieve and where you want to be going um, and get a feel for who you are and how you fit around the people who are immediately around you um, and your environment and your community and yeah it's it's just taking that that time to invest in yourself. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not a meditation meditative guru or anything like that. I, I use very very basic techniques that I got off YouTube, um, and I just use it as a as a way to sort of step back for a very short period of time at a time. I mean, I do it regularly throughout the day. Um, personally, I do you know, ten minute sort of sessions. Um, and again, it's just to take that step back, especially when I'm, I feel I'm getting short of breath because I'm not concentrating on breathing, as weird as that sounds. Um, but I'm, so, I'm just so focused on whatever I need to do. I've then re Once I snap out of that, I'll realize I've been sat here for 90 minutes, haven't taken a break, haven't been to the loo, haven't been to water, and okay, time to take a step back, let's just go lie down on the sofa, lie down on the bed, take 10 minutes, realign, if you like, and then come back, come back to it. Um, and it's important, it's important, it's very, very easy, like I say, just to disappear into some, to down a rabbit hole for 90 minutes, not realize where it's gone. Um, and I'm not even talking about the, the social media distraction side of it, or, or anything like that, or, you know, <laughs> disappear down Twitter rabbit holes, this is actual you know, work and, you know, you're achieving stuff, but at the same time, you're kind of ignoring yourself and what your, your own needs are in favor of what your work needs are. Um, yeah, and med meditation is um, a, a useful tool in yeah. that respect. I think that surprised me most about the book. It is, it's almost like a wellness book for people who are remote working as well, because, you know, you talk about diet, exercise, meditation, the, the whole thing um, you even touch on on things like mental health depression and and, uh, and that kind of thing it's a, it's a terrific read it's a really good read and it's helped me enormously as I am a brand new remote worker and I know the book is for coders but all of the stuff in there was relevant to me all of it so yeah. thank you very much for that Prem the book is called 
Effective Remote Working Techniques for Coders by Harry Singh. If you'd like a copy of the book, if you go in the notes below down here, I'll have a link for you where you can click on that link. And if you sign up for a free 30-day trial of Audible, you get the book for free. Just click on there. Client, uh, sign up for the 30-day trial and you get the book for free. Especially if in these times that we're in, you've had to make this lifestyle change that I have and you're working from home now and the first thing, just like in your book you say, the first thought is, woohoo, here we go. There's a lot more to it. There's a lot more work to working from home. Prem, thank you very much and best of luck with the book. And the next one is for managers, isn't it? We've done that one. That one will be out soon. So keep your eyes yeah. on uh, yeah, similar information, but with a manager's slant. Brilliant. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Graham. Talk to you soon, mate. Cheers.